guys, welcome back. This is day 19 and we're going to be talking about box beams. Now before we get into the box beams, we're going to be doing a little side trip down to our truss supplier, Southwest Truss, and they're located in Sierra Vista, Arizona. The sales representative called me the other day and he said they're going to be starting the uh, construction of our trusses and I wanted to get some footage for you so you could see how they're built. When we get back from Southwest Truss, I'm going to start building the box beams. The box beams are constructed out of 2x6 material with half-inch exterior grade plywood. As you can see, if you look behind me, the box beams are already in place. So, let me show you how it was done. Before we get started with today's video, I want to get out, give a shout out to a YouTube channel called Building Roots. They're a family located in North Dakota and they're building a straw bale house. They're doing timber frame construction, and it's a young couple with, I think they have four children, and they are doing an absolutely fantastic job. Really worth checking out. Again, it's called Building Roots, and I'll leave a link to their channel in the description box below. Well, that's the design. Looks like the paper. It appears as though they've got a couple made already. They're using a 2x6 top plate because of the span and the overhang. These roof trusses have an overhang of 3 feet on the front and 2 feet on the back. What you see here are the workers putting in mending plates. They're tacking them in place with a hammer and they will be eventually flattened down by a giant roller securing them in place. They're tacking them on the top with a hammer and then they're prying up the truss with the claw of the hammer and placing a second mending plate on the back side. And again, the large roller will come over and flatten all these into place. Now that the mending plates have been put in place, the large roller is rolled over the entire truss, yeah. securing all the mending all plates in place. Okay, so what they're going to do now is they're sending these plates these are going to go through these final set of rollers right here. And this is the last flattening. And what you're looking at now is the final product. Getting ready to be put up on our house. So this is the first box beam, consisting of two 2x6s and half-inch exterior plywood. I make the first box beam on a set of sawhorses and then lift it into place. After realizing how heavy it gets, I decided to build the rest of the box beams up on top of the wall in place. It made it a lot easier for me. In an effort to keep the entire perimeter closed, I'm staggering the 2x6s so that the corner wall, this 2x6 will extend up and thereby leave, uh, or I should say completely close off the perimeter. If I had these of equal length, I would have then a gap on the outside. I would have this gap going right to the outside and I'd have to fill that somehow. 
So this is now the corner piece that's going to fit onto the corner I just showed you. It's, of course, upside down because I just wanted to illustrate how I'm securing these 2x6s to the plywood. And that way, the boards will close off this corner. First off, sorry about the wind. Here you can see how the boards now overlap. And I'm able to screw now this board, this plywood, into these 2x6s on this side. And it brings it down nice and flush. Gives me a nice 45, or a nice 90 degree angle. Let's look at it from the outside. I hope you can see this by staggering those 2x6s. I'm able to create a closed corner right there. And here it's very clear to see that our bales really got wonky during the storm. But this will give us a nice, uh, a nice reference point from which to straighten our bales and walls out. Today begins the second day of box beam construction. I started off yesterday afternoon after returning from the hardware store and I was able to get about a third done. The corners are overlapping nicely. Everything is staying nice and level. We're going the full width of the bales, and then the strapping material will come up and over these box beams. I'm using the nail gun with two inch ring shank nails. So this is what the front of the house looks like once the box beam is installed. And again, the straps have to come up and over it to compress the bales. So I've rounded the last corner. I have and another, I'm guessing, 30 feet to fill in. And what I'm doing is anywhere where I have to go over a span, be it a door or a window, I'm doing my best to leave the two by sixes so that they have a full span and don't break over the window. I ran into a little issue here on this last wall. This is the wall right here that we were having problems keeping vertical at the a couple videos back. And after I took the tarp down after the storm, uh, this wall really became buckled in. And you can see that by how the outside 2x6 wants to hang off the wall. So what I did was I took a 16-inch wide piece of scrap piece of plywood, and I screwed them together to prevent this from falling off the wall. I'll be able to get my half-inch plywood on this and then we'll be able to strap it and re-straighten this wall. But if I didn't do this, I wouldn't be able to keep my spacing correct, and this would want to edge off the side of the bale. Now that the box beam has been installed, the next step is to get the strapping up and over the box beam. Now we're not going to cinch it down real tight. We're going to leave enough slack to allow us to maneuver the bales 
to get them in the best possible vertical position. In order to give us a guide for how far the bales need to be moved, what we're going to do is remove some of these braces here. And we're going to secure them to the deck along the bottom and to the box beam along the top. That'll give us a guide as to how far the bales need to be moved to get into a vertical position. Once they're in that vertical position, we'll be able to cinch our strapping down tight and then remove those braces. What we're doing here is grabbing the level and I put it on the vertical brace that we just installed and to our pleasant surprise it was almost exactly plumb. Sometimes you got to get lucky. Now that the braces are in place, Yvonne is giving me directions from the outside as to which bales need to be moved. I was inside with the large tamper pretty much whacking at the bales. Once the bales were in their final position, we were able to tighten the straps down, securing the box beam to the bales. In order to make adjustments to the bales that have been pinned with the vampire stakes and the structural screws, I got to take those structural screws out. If I had to do this over, I would put the vampire stakes in horizontally. I would do a plunge cut with the chainsaw and I would drive the vampire stake in the entire width of the bale. That way, after I make adjustments, I still assured that I'll hit that vampire stake when I reinsert the structural screw. As it is now, it might not, it, I might not hit that vampire stake. And if that's the case, then I'll have to put a new stake in going horizontal. That's good. This part, this side, yeah. push to the out, cut, push to me. One next to it, to your left, on top, yeah. has to come out at the seam. Yeah, that's it. You can push that out. That's good. That's good. The north wall is completely cinched tight. In addition, the window bucks have now been screwed to the box beam using five inch structural screws. That'll allow us now to remove the bracing and this wall is solid.
this two by four bracing is working well and I don't think we'll have a problem getting this uh, wall into shape. This was the wall that was giving us such problems a couple videos back. Okay guys, I just got a call from Southwest Trust and the delivery is on its way. Pretty fast turnover, about three weeks, two and a half weeks actually. So hard to complain about that. And I think I hear the truck coming. So just like I thought, he has a bed that he'll be able to lift up and drop these exactly where we need them. The box beam is complete, and the next step will be our clear story. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, you're not going to want to miss the rest of this build. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box below, and we answer as many questions as possible. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for your support, and we'll catch you in the next video.